Hello. What I'd like to do in this video is talk about uh, thermal noise or thermal signal and the noise associated with that thermal signal. In some ways the thermal noise is very similar to shock noise in its we have a we have a signal which is effectively thermal current or thermal signal and associated with that is a element of noise again it turns out to be related to the square root of the amount of dark current that we have. So there's both a signal element and there's a noise element and uncertainty on that. And it's really the uncertainty, the noise element, that's really going to degrade the image because we can just subtract the actual signal away. Okay, so this little graph here shows the uh, duct current versus the temperature from a Kodak sensor. What we see obviously is that higher temperatures we have higher duct current. Duct current in this way is expressed in electrons per pixel per second. And at lower temperatures, we have lower levels of dark current. All our cameras, or pretty much all our cameras, are cooled CCD cameras. So the reason for cooling them is to decrease the dark current and decrease this dark uh, current noise. Uh, hopefully, what we get down to the point where the dark current is becomes, or the signal becomes insignificant compared with other types of noise that we're going to have on an image. So those other types of noise are read noise and shot noise. So if we have a look here at uh, a Sony or a Attic 414, which uses a Sony sensor, uh, that, that has, has a remarkably, the, the dark current is so low, it's really quite difficult to actually measure. Uh, it's roughly 0 0.001 electrons per pixel per second at minus 10 degrees. Uh, and that means that in a 10 minute exposure, we can expect to have less than 0.6 of an electron of thermal signal. And the, the noise associated with that signal is, is smaller still. And what this really turns out to mean is that the that's read noise and shot noise will always dominate an image uh, from a kill CCD camera. And that, that's really important. Uh, and it kind of differentiates imaging using cameras that are uncooled. So if we're using a digital SLR camera and it's on a warm day or a warm night, then we'd expect that the noise from thermal sources would actually be quite significant compared with things like read noise. But if we move to using a cooled CCD camera, that's one source of noise that normally ends up at a much lower level than the other sources of noise that we'll need to deal with. And it is obviously the reason we kill CCDs. Related to dark current, that's uh, uh, not exactly the same, are uh, hot, warm, cool and cold pixels. So dark current is something that affects every pixel. Uh, hot, warm, cool and cold pixels are slightly different. Hot pixels are pixels that effectively stuck always on maximum signal, so in this case 65,000. Uh, this is a dark frame from an attic 11,000. Uh, we can see it's on, on the image we've stretched it to the point where we can see lots of really warm pixels. I'm not sure there's any really hot pixels on it. And typically we don't really see very many hot pixels, but we see quite a few warm pixels. And a warm pixel is a pixel whose value is above or outside of the normal distribution of bias frame pixels. And they appear as these little white spots. Uh, and there's no clear differentiation between where the warm pixels start and normal bias pixels end. You, you can choose however many standard deviations from the mean to make that definition. But as we see on the histogram, is they really appear as a tail to the right of the normal distribution of bias frame pixels. Uh, we can also look at cool and cold pixels. Again, these are things that we see very, very few of on uh, CCDs. Cool are pixels that pick up signal at a slower rate than the average pixel, and so tend to lag behind the average. If we take a flat field, we may see some cool pixels, but probably not very many. And cold pixels are pixels that are not sensitive to light at all, so they always end up with a bias frame signal, and then typically we wouldn't see any of those, but it's, it's possible we might have one or two on a sensor. Okay, well, I want to move uh, have a quick look at is the kind of idea that we can use dark frames to reduce noise and this is something that comes up from time to time it might be interesting just to have a quick little look at this so what I've done is taken two images 
Uh, they're both 10 minute exposures. Uh, they're both dark frames and so no light falls on the sensor. Two, two 10 minute exposures in the dark. Uh, both images come up with lots of warm and hot pixels and have some dark current on them. So how do we fix that to make, make it look appear as a very flat image? Well, on the left, what we've done is we've taken one image, subtracted the other one from it, added an offset to make sure we don't get any zip beyond zero values or less than zero values to mess up the statistics. Uh, and then we looked at the standard deviation, look at the spread of pixel values. So from doing that method, we have a standard deviation of 55 pixels. Uh, or 55 ADU units, rather. <clears throat> the other way of doing this is to look at the defect map. So we've taken the first image and rather than subtract it, we've looked at those and identify any warm and hot pixels. Then on the second image, what you do is you look around, you identify those pixels and you go to fix them. So you look at surrounding pixel values and you remove the hot and warm pixel values and place it with an average of its surrounding pixels. And if you do that, you end up with a standard deviation of 43. So you have a much tighter uh, distribution uh, of the background. It means that any signal there is gonna be easier to detect uh, the background is just flatter and less noisy. Uh, it's a slightly unfair comparison uh, in terms of dark frames. What you'd normally do with the dark frames is take a lot of dark frames, average them, so you've reduced the noise within that single master dark. But it really emphasizes the point that if you're going to use dark frames, you need to take a lot of dark frames. I'd suggest taking two or three times more dark frames than you're going to average image frames, just to make sure the noise in the dark frame uh, isn't significant compared to the noise in the image. Uh, or the other way of dealing with this kind of thing is to use techniques such as defect mapping, which are very effective, or you can use dithering and sigma combine, both of which effectively identify pixels that are outside of the norm and effectively repair them one way or another. So that's the recommendation for me is to try using defect mapping or dithering on the, your images. And if you can use dark frames, Make sure you take a lot of them. So I hope that's been useful. Uh, thank you for watching.